Hi everyone, welcome. I'm down here in my wormery, and I got a bin over here that I'm planning to feed today. It's a it's a population of worms that I um, kind of fostered from a very small number of worms. And at this point, I think we've got a bin that's pretty much like any other bin. It's just got a whole bunch of worms in it. So for a while, I was treating it special, small population, so small feedings and small space to give them. But at this point, they've been moved into a full size bin. Today, they're going to get a a full-size meal and that's for sure this is all um, pumpkin and a little bit of coffee what I've been doing lately with this pumpkin is juicing it just you know taking it out of the freezer because that stuff's frozen and as I squeeze it it dumps out tons of liquid but from what I remember 10 days ago the last time we checked in on this system um, I did comment on how a little extra moisture wouldn't hurt there so rather than you know extracting perhaps 10 12 ounces worth of liquid out of that stuff like I've been doing lately I'm just putting it right into the bin and let that moisture go straight into this material over here. So we're going to get this up onto the bench and get it fed. Let's get started. So now to accompany that big generous feeding, we're going to have also a nice portion of some of my pre-made bedding to go hand in hand with that food. So let's get these coverings off and let the meal begin. I've just been occasionally, you know, finding creatures in my bin that I would rather not have around. They'll turn into flying insects, and this is, after all, the basement of my house. <laughs> so anytime I spot one of these little guys, I'm pulling them out. Let's see if there's any other ones that roll around when we move the top covering. I think we've got them all. Klingons in here? No, I don't think so. Last week, besides a whole bunch of bedding going in here with the food that they got, their um, their top covering newspaper got replaced. So what was um, so what was covering previously a whole bunch of shreds of individual little chunks of the old newspaper went in as bedding to go with the food, and then some of my homemade bedding as well as the old coffee filter that had been previously showing us where we last fed kind of like what this one here is doing now so both of these hunks of paper are only about 10 days old as far as being in service right in the line of fire directly above where the feeding was and this thing certainly got nibbled away at pretty nicely right over the middle where the food was certainly has a good chunk of it chewed away the foods they got last time were, there was a kiwi, I think, and that's this going to be right here, yeah, okay. Kiwi I don't have a lot of experience with, so I'm curious to see how it comes along. I know it's loaded with juices, but it almost seems like if it, um, you know, never got infiltrated, maybe it's just still sort of a, a huge treat waiting to be exploited. Well, I could see juices flowing out the bottom. So it had a hole in the bottom, unless I just created that hole. I don't know which is the case. I did imagine that that in itself would bring a good deal of moisture into the system. But if it's all still locked up within the fruit, it looks like a little water balloon. <laughs> it's getting mushy, so all the stuff inside is probably... um stuff that the worms will eventually enjoy but if they wanted it now they'd be all over it already I think so I would imagine there's probably a process that needs to occur before our worms can start really taking advantage of a morsel like this I don't know I don't know too much about feeding kiwis to worms hopefully it's not something that's gonna harm them I mean when I fed it last time I don't remember anyone commenting on um, any dangers involved with feeding your worms kiwi so I assume it's fine just other leftovers banana stems try to remember what other chunks of food were placed in here I think there was a hunk of pumpkin uh-huh here we go and the pumpkin after 10 days it seems like the majority of it is usually gone the skin is always pretty easy to spot yep, here's a little bit of the 
the fleshy part of the pumpkin too besides just its skin there was still some leftovers in here but not too much yeah you know I mean definitely um, definitely corroborating what I saw in the video last week which was me commenting on how a little extra moisture probably wouldn't hurt in here and when we took when we took all that old top covering newspaper and threw it in as bedding it was dry so it was going to suck up moisture even the uh, the pre-made bedding that's mainly this shredded newspaper shredded cardboard and leaves that also um, is stored damp so what I showed you before that material is covered and it's got um, a little bit of moisture content to it St certainly still has a lot of absorption capability it's just not perfectly dry but it'll still um, it'll still suck moisture into itself so I think we will use a good amount of that right below where we place those pumpkin bits in because that'll all soak right in and that'll all become stuff that the worms will really enjoy when it's nice and damp and full of pumpkin juice all right, yeah, let's open up a good size hole here. At day 90, this is the system's ninth feeding, which um, makes today's interval, since the last time it was fed, which is 10 days, a, a perfect, um, perfect par for the course interval, because of those 90, um, 90 days and nine feedings equates to, on average, a a feeding once every 10 days and at day 90 it's just kind of rule of thumb in my wormery to begin tapering off the use of um, slow composting bedding in my systems once I'm at at or near um, day 100 and at day 90 I could see us coming back in here once or twice still and you know applying bedding as we would any other bin but then after that uh, in a short period of time, within a couple feedings, I believe, we'll start tapering off the amount of bedding we apply in the hopes that the worms focus on just eating up what's already in there as far as bedding is concerned and uh, drive us closer to having a, a nice batch of finished castings. I think I'll start off by sprinkling in a little bit of coffee to... Oh boy! <laughs> The moisture of the pumpkin appears to have um, frozen to our coffee filter. So drop in a portion of the coffee right to the bottom. These chunks, some of them are pretty big. Yeah, they're very big. <laughs> so I guess as long as I can kind of level it out a little bit, luckily it's been thawing here for a while and the pieces can finally chip away from each other. I had to use a, a large knife to chip away at this thing, kind of like an ice pick, to dislodge these few large chunks. Luckily at this point, a little while later, I'm able to just bust them apart by hand easily. And I can already feel some of the moisture starting to come off some of these pieces that are beginning to thaw. It feels kind of spongy and there's definitely a lot of liquid caught up right there. <laughs> Stuff the worms are going to really enjoy. I've got a little bit of my crushed eggshell that will add as the grit for today's feeding. And keep with the whole layering theme, we'll drop in a little bit more of my pre-made bedding mix and then we'll tap out the rest of the coffee that we've got here. It kind of makes me wonder, hey, why don't we... um upgrade our feeding zone indicator with this new filter and as we start to cover up our feeding zone here what we could do is uh, maybe even incorporate that old coffee filter to be a little bit of supplementary bedding to go along with today's feeding just dump it right in there but we'll cover it a little bit we'll submerge it we'll see how it progresses Ooh. I almost forgot about this thing. <laughs> kind of startled me actually because when it burst, it kind of squeaked at me. <laughs> oh, sorry, kiwi. Now I could smell kiwi. Now there's the scent of kiwi. So I would hope that this is going to take on some interest soon. 
How absent-minded of me. How could I forget about the kiwi? Let's make sure it's all covered up. I don't like to have things like this, especially. Things that are kind of like sweet, aromatic, out on the surface of my bin. Seems like it has the potential to um, attract who knows what, you know. I just don't want to have that going on over here. So let's see what we can do about covering up here. The plastic going on at the end. A little sprout growing here. The plastic going on at the end is going to take all that moisture from that pumpkin, all that moisture from that kiwi, and um, lock it down into the system, not let it evaporate away. And it should make for a really nice, um, cozy, damp space in this bin by the next time we check in. Even down here, as I start to probe down deep, I could sense that it's pretty dry and there's only a couple worms hanging out in it. I guess some of them like it dry, but most like it damp, so I'd rather have it um, catering to the masses. So we get as much worm traffic happening over there as possible. Because, you know, when it's dry like that, you're not going to see a lot of worm traffic, unfortunately. All right. Here again, I didn't comment on it while I was looking through, but, you know, it does seem like a fairly routine worm bin. Not one where you feel like you've got to hunt around and look and search for just one or two worms. There are worms pretty much all over the place. Giving them more and more space by increasing their bedding always being really generous with the bedding to build out the space for them is something I'm always into and hopefully that you know uh, causes them to feel comfortable and want to continue spreading out their population or increasing their population and hopefully uh, hopefully what we'll see here is a, an ongoing growth of this population as time goes on so I'm keeping my fingers crossed for that I guess all we really got left to do here, unless I forgot something, is to get things covered up and cleaned up and put away. But I'm not going to keep you around for that because that's boring. Before I go, though, let me really quickly say thank you. Thank you so much for watching. Hopefully you enjoyed the video. If you did, as always, please remember to leave me a thumbs up. That's always really appreciated. And if you haven't done so already, please also consider subscribing to the channel, too. That's really appreciated as well. Have a great day. Bye.